All right, my name is Amber, and this is Kurt Ralston. Um, he's a current moments uh, resident, and he has a lot of information to share with us about the river. So I'd like to sort of come to the floor with him. Um, Kurt, can you describe or just tell us a little bit about who you are, how long you've lived on the river, and just some information about what you have going on right now? Uh, I've lived on the river for probably in and around moments for a good part of 50 years. And my, I was on the first boat uh, at the, the Moments Anchor Club, which has been around 60 years now, and my dad introduced me to the river. So then I started learning about it by all the different boats that I've owned. So the whole thing is I've seen bad changes happen, and that's due to the sand coming from Indiana. And slowly but surely now, the way Moments looks with the sand, that's the way Kankakee looks and it's choking it out and the whole problem with the river right now, we have no storage. Thus, everybody flooded bad this time. And I hate to say it, but it's only going to get worse. And that's one aspect of it, uh, the sand. And then the flooding, you know, we need to try to do something about it. Uh, also, right now, we have an issue with the cow farm in Indiana, which is just across the state line. So. So right can... now, 4,500 cows mm -hmm. will produce 26 million gallons of urine. And right now we're at flood stage, so that means that can possibly contaminate our water system. And guess what? We're downhill, or downstream, in the river, and that means it could go to moments and affect Van Drunen Farms, and also it'll affect the 85,000 people right now that are drinking water out of the river. So can you really describe about the changes that have sort of happened to the rivers, why it is that we're getting all of the sand, and just sort of describe what's happening from the Indiana side over to Illinois? Well, what happened in Indiana is they realized they couldn't uh, get the water out of the river naturally, so they started putting pumps in. And they've got a great big one running at Somalia right now, and, and right across the state line. But all the farmers started pumping water into the and the stone quarry that got approved, they're pumping a lot of water into Singleton. So not only, and that em empties in right east of Moments. So we're getting water not only from the river, we're getting all kinds of flood water from the Singleton Ditch. That was built way back in 1886. And now they just keep making it deeper and longer. And that's, that's why, a lot of, why we're having a lot of water. So the whole thing is the river is changing due to every time the bottom starts coming up on the river, it spreads out. So then that means when we, every time we have a flood or like especially in the spring, but now this is the winter and we still got it, sand and everything that's silt, you name it, and trash and everything else gets put into the wetlands and it's slowly choking it off. And I see a lot less fish and holes that used to be eight feet deep, they'd be lucky if they're even five now, maybe four feet. Fishermen, the fish are suffering big time. And they're going to get smaller because they've got nothing to eat. And the clams, I call them clams, mussels I guess you would call them. But anyway, the only ones we have left now are right here in town where there's rocks. That's what they like. They die in the sand. I find so many dead ones. So our whole eagle system is getting destroyed. And I just, I, I talk till I'm blue in the face, and nobody seems to worry about it until now everybody's flooded and everybody's mad. And I feel sorry that we flooded, but you know what? The answer is the sand, but the thing is we can't, we need to talk about it, but then we need to get something done about it. So then, can we talk about the refuge and what, what that refuge has started to, I mean, I know that's sort of like right at that Indiana border t as well. How does that affect our river? Um, well, what the refuge would do would be, it would basically flood us, mm -hmm. and then just, they would take, when they buy, when someone would, when they would buy the property, it's actually, they would take a bulldozer, bulldoze down the house, so what you have now, you'll lose all of that, mm -hmm. and I went down to southern Illinois to see what a refuge actually looks like, almost all the businesses closed there. And the only thing they grow is mosquitoes there. It was horrible, so horrible. Mm -hmm. And everything is like a big swamp. Yeah. Moments is much better than that, and so it's can't. Our whole, this river is, 
as our way of life and to just take that away from all the hunters to voters everybody that yeah. has picnics and families it's it's so wrong it's so wrong mm -hmm. and plus Fandrunas grow their crops from the river you know they use river water so I just I, I just don't think we need it okay that's great that's good um, so then let's talk about just some of the things that are sort of happening now in terms of you know I know that you just talked about the farms a little bit can we go back into that what what those farms are going to create problems for us here in King Kiki well, well, like right now I have a picture here of showing water on Beaver Lake that is spring fed and they drained it back in the uh, about a hundred years ago mm -hmm. and the thing is it still wants to be part of the Grand Marsh and go b revert back to what it was so the whole thing is they want to put that cow farm right on top of it okay. and if that if contamination would go into that aquifer which is the I have two of them that's in Indiana here on this map and that will go if that gets in there that will contaminate that water and that will bother willow slough and then if it gets into the ditch like it would do right now there's a lot of water in it coming from there that would contaminate the water supply in moments uh, right at the state line there and also it can affect Kankakee and that's where you get your water out of the river. Mm -hmm. Now how, can you tell us about how many I know that you gave me some numbers earlier, so you get the number of gallons that it, of urine and feces. Yes, uh, it, on the cow farm it would be 26 million gallons of urine in one year on 4,500 uh, head of cattle. And this is in 2,500 acres. And uh, they're, it's supposed to take a lot of waste and make uh, fertilizer out of it. But you know what, that's a really a trying process trying to do it on that property when there's one person that lives very close to there she has water at four feet in her well and so what I'm saying is that everybody I told Saturday at the meeting we had is that it could contaminate their wells and then what are they going to do about it they're, they're in big they're in big trouble in Indiana but see Illinois will be in trouble if they have them big spills and they come down the river because you know stuff rolls downhill and that's exactly what will happen and they want to do a hog farm really close to that I don't have the numbers right now on how much 10,000 hogs would do but trust me it can't be good and that's sitting on top of the other uh, aquifer right here it's, it's, it's a bad thing yeah. there's got to be other property that they could buy that wouldn't affect us like this but they just didn't look uh, as far as I'm concerned all right so now um a big conversation in Kankakee has been talking about us dredging the river. Yes. And that's been talked about that it's been a million dollars a mile and I I know that we've had discussion. What's a better solution yes. for that? I went to River Roundtable for three years. We tried to do a project, a pilot project we called it, for doing dredging. So we got it all lined up and then we run into a big snag and, it, and all we have now is dead paperwork and dead permits but we do have some numbers but at the same time um, I was trying to promote a, a long-term solution and that is put a sand collection system at the state line what that would do is run 24 7 all you'd have to do is take the sand once a week out of that area or move it and it will run, it works by gravity. The sand comes up, drops in a grate, and then it has a big pump at the end. That will work all by itself. All we have to do is get the, is get the sand once a week. And so the, re, the reason I promote that is put it at state line where the sand's coming down. Everybody downstream in Illinois will benefit. It will take time. You know, we still may have some issues about the the damage that's done at Six Mile Pool, they call it in Kankakee, on the storage. We've lost storage. We don't have any in moments either. So to me, the solution is to get this, and this is long term, this will take sand. And it'll, the river will start cleaning itself little by little. But we have to start somewhere, and the sooner we get it in there, the better off. And the Army Corps engineers, they do like that system. And that's 
really 100% of it right there. If they don't like it, you can't use it. And they already have tested it and have it down south somewhere. So. And so it's already active in other areas yes. and it works out well there. And yes. Yeah. And and I do have all the numbers on you know as far as the, the how that works. Mm -hmm. um, still, we could you know we could work on maybe something slight dredging, but the whole problem with dredging it's very very messy. And like I told Amber already, in moments we don't have roads to get to the wetlands, so you can't dredge. It's just that simple. It's not going to happen. So I do have a. Another thing, do you want me to tell them about this, the island thing? Yeah, I'd love for you. Okay, I, my solution is if, when you can't do anything and get to it by truck or anything else, take an island that's already there and take that sand. Now, normally most pumps will pump a thousand feet at least. So that means you could put sand either on a small barge or something and put that sand on an island that's already there and just make it longer. That's my solution. Because you already have that island, just make that island bigger. And because we've got to come up with some game plan for Kankakee. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, okay, I only care about moments. That's not true. We've got to fix the whole thing. We can start by cleaning the river. And the people in Peoria and everywhere else, I don't get it why nobody wants to put that system in there. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is going to take some money. But that system in the long run, that's the cure, it's not a band-aid. Dredging is a band-aid, so anybody that thinks dredging is the answer, it's only a small fix, really. That's wonderful. Yeah. And now let's let's talk about the numbers. So I know that, um, you know, dredging is a million dollars a mile on estimate. Yes. And then what does yes, your system... Yes, at least that much. Okay. And so what does your system look like? Um, it's a steel container that is 30 feet long, it's uh, two feet high, so in other words, you can set it in the bottom of the river, and it works by gravity. So as the sand comes up, it drops into a grate. It has a, a three-phase motor at the end. You, they come in 30-foot sections. I estimate the sand already in the river, the, the state line bridge is 222 feet long. Because of the sand already there, we can only go roughly about 90 feet. So the most we could put in there as far as collectors mm -hmm. is three of them. Okay. It would be 90 feet. And then you hook that up and they run about $400,000 a piece. But they have all their instruments and everything in it so that you, once you flip the switch on, it's going to run all by itself. And for any farmers that are listening, it has like an auger system and it, it looks just like somebody put in a corner where it'll go up an auger and the sand comes out almost dry. That's the beauty of the sand collect system is that it doesn't do all the damage because remember in dredging, in case you don't know this, it's only 20% sand gets out of the river and you got 80% water. So that's very, very messy. The sand collection system does not have that because it puts most of the water back in the collector. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a win-win situation. So now that we know, I mean, forty four hundred thousand dollars for that times three, you're looking at what okay. one point two million dollars right, right um, around. I do have the numbers for Singleton Ditch. We thought about putting it in there because they're we're getting all kinds of sand down Singleton. So uh, Singleton Ditch is three quarters of a mile north of uh, of the state line bridge. If we put the system in there, that, and I did a turnkey, in other words. All I would do is give the guy money that have the contractor wouldn't do anything except sign off on it, and it would be fully operational. And for one thirty-foot collector, and that's getting everything ready, all the stuff. It was it was uh, about one point eight million, and then it would that's turnkey. That means w nobody else did anything; just gave it to the people that build the system. So I do have the numbers on that, and I gave uh, gave them to a couple people already. Great. So then, you know, at that 1.8, what is a, as us as a community, how can we contribute to a system like that? So like well, transportation or is there, like what is it that we as a community, you know, any farmers, any, like what, what other people can Well, work, I think the people in the, the drainage districts, we need to try to work with them. And, and it's like we need to come together for one cause and that is deal with it because we're, eventually the way it's going 
the flooding's just going to get uh, get worse. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but that's the flooding we got right now. Like uh, one particular boat club got 18 inches of water in it. It destroyed their beer cooler, everything. So it's only going to get worse, and it's not going to get better. And if, if anybody wants to drive by on Route 17 there and look at that house, that's two weeks' time of sand. Can you? That's just a drop in the bucket compared to what we really are getting. Mm -hmm. And right now, I can't answer how much sand came down from this flood because the river's still at flood stage. Mm -hmm. I won't. We won't know how much damage that we've taken already until the river goes down and I'm able to get on it. But trust me, I don't just talk about the river. I'm on it. And in order to be effective, people need to get passion like I do. That's what makes the difference between somebody talking about it and giving you lip service and then actually getting something done. Yeah. But I'm willing to, to help. Anybody wants to talk to me and help. We need to be, come together as one and get this solved or else we can kiss the river goodbye, fishing goodbye, kiss your homes goodbye, and then what are we going to have? We're going to we're going to be sitting there with a lot of sand, and you you can only so, sell so many sandbags to make money. Yeah, that's absolutely. the way I look at it. Absolutely. All right. Um. So then let's go over how to get a hold of you. How do we? How does everybody reach out to you? How do we? How do we make this happen. Um, we I I'm trying to organize uh, where we're at right now. A, our first meeting because we used to have the River Roundtable in Kankakee but that fell apart so now basically I'm thinking we can start over and um, I'm, I'm going to try to put on my Facebook page if anybody's willing to go you can go to Kurt Ralston and you can see pictures I've got then that way you can learn a little bit more it's I'm trying to like I, I call it a voice in, instead of the wilderness, it's like a voice in the sanderness because it's sand. And the thing is, I'm trying to stir everybody up and take your anger and everything else. Let's channel it and let's save the river, save our homes, and save a place for our children. And so instead of playing in a sand pit, that they actually can fish and grow up like we used to know, instead of having it all be destroyed before our eyes, because people just don't care. They only think of one thing, and that's the green almighty dollar. And we've got to get away from that, or we can just kiss America goodbye, as far as I'm saying. I mean, I, I hate to say it like that, but that, that's the bottom line. Yeah. We need to go back to old school. It's a good school. <laughs> okay, so, um, so Facebook, let's spell out your last name, so in that way, if anybody I, needs to find it. Okay, it's uh, Kurt's my first C-U-R-T. Last name's Ralston, R-A-L-S-T-O-N. Uh, Any email, phone number? Yes, it's C-U-R-T, and then the number five, five times, at AOL.com. Uh, also, it, you know, if we have some meetings and that, I'm also a DJ. I go by the name of the last DJ. I'd be willing to uh, use my sound system to you know, have a meeting or whatever, and I'm thinking our first meeting is going to be right here at Sluggers uh, in Moment. Uh, I'd like to start here. They have a lot of room, and we have a, uh, actually our gracious bartenders working right now. And you can't beat Tanya. And if your car breaks down, just throw this in. Tanya's a very good tow truck driver, and she'll <laughs> fix you right up. So you got to have people. you got to have support. And that's what it's going to take. And I may be a little on the mean but side sometimes, but I'm serious as a heart attack on what I believe in. All right. Sounds great. Um, until if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us or comment below, and we'll try to answer all those questions for you. Thank you. Great.